federal government announced a new effort to combat financial fraud earlier this hour. The Justice and Treasury Departments are joining Housing and Urban Development and the SEC in a task force to crack down on economic financial crimes. Joining us now, former federal prosecutor Doug Burns. Great to have you on set, Doug. Thanks. All right, so this replaces a 2002 agency and basically just kind of adds more government agencies to it. Are you optimistic? Uh, well, you see this a lot of times, Laurie. In other words, you know, you'll see an announcement. Uh, we're adding more manpower, you know, to financial prosecutions. Um, the attorney general mentioned the Madoff case by name. That was interesting. He also said that they're going to do both criminal and civil enforcement, and that word is hugely important, civil, because what that means is forfeiture of assets, and that's a very, very important tool for the government not to spend money, but to take in money. So this yeah. financial <laughs> fraud task force, right, the goal is to be, is to take preemptive measures so they don't right. have to prosecute when it becomes a disaster. Right. Realistic? Well, yes and no. I mean, uh, cynics would argue this is like putting up the stop sign after the accident, right, at the intersection. Um, zealots would say this is great and wonderful, but your point is an excellent one because think about it. There's so much mortgage fraud, so many mortgage problems, the whole mortgage-backed security situation. And the attorney general said today at the press conference that one of the aims of this is to try to prevent another meltdown. Exactly, Mark. And the point is, um, that's why you've got HUD and the HUD secretary in there. I mean, I've been involved in mortgage fraud cases for 20 years on both sides of the aisle, prosecutor, defense lawyer. Um, but now, with things as bad as they are, um, it, it's a problem. So I think it's a good announcement, and we'll see what happens. So you defend these white-collar criminals or accused criminals, so this has to be good news for you, more business? Well, it probably is. That's right. Uh, you know, <laughs> What? <laughs> but joking aside, too, people wiser than I have said that in difficult economic times, don't forget, white collar type offenses sometimes go up. I mean, I haven't analyzed any real empirical data about it, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's true. In other words, mortgage fraud, bank fraud, lying and being dishonest to financial institutions probably increases in bad times, Mark. But let me ask you something. It, it, it's, it's one thing when you have these agencies trying to coordinate and work together. There have always been complaints that maybe there are turf wars going Yes. on and the right's not knowing what the left is doing. But now you're talking about agencies at the federal, state, and local level. How complicated is this going to be? No, that's a good point. You have to kind of break that down. I mean, sometimes when the federal government, people always use the term feds, which I hate, but putting that to the side, you know, when the federal government works with local authorities, sometimes there are tensions in turf wars. And then in the federal government, a lot of times you'll see tensions between districts, you know what I mean? One district wants to prosecute a case, but the other one doesn't want them to. So. You know, uh, you do need a lot of coordination, and uh, we'll see. But, I mean, if you look at the list uh, that you gave me, I mean, it's like 50 agencies. Oh, yeah. I mean, and it's got to cost <laughs> a boatload, too. <laughs> right. Right. right? Right. Well, we'll just print the money for that. We'll uh, get it. Now, that's a joke on the Fed, obviously. <laughs> right now, that's a whole nother that's topic. That's another seminar. How are yeah, they going to exactly. absorb all that liquidity? All right. In the meantime, um, you know, so is this going to change your job? Are you going to have to do a little more work? Or how do you prepare to defend these guys? Since they're probably going to crack down on some of the smaller guys, too, not just yeah. the Bernie Madoffs and the, you know, the Galleon right. hedge funds. No, I think the distinction mm -hmm. uh, will be maybe in the volume of cases brought, but not necessarily a difference in the way, you know, we defend the case. I mean, uh, we defend them basically in terms of the size, the volume, the complexity. Doug, let's switch gears sure, a little bit. Uh, story we have on the terminal today, more than 14,700 Americans disclosing those secret offshore bank accounts. As the IRS said before, when we had you on just a couple of weeks ago, yes. the IRS and the U.S. attorneys were saying, come to us before we come to you. Yes, I saw that. Um, did they? Did people well, that's a whole, I mean, that, you know, that's a seminar in uh, ethics, law, and morality. I mean, we will not prosecute you if you do what you were morally and legally supposed to do in the first place. I mean, that's a sad commentary. Uh, but we can put ivory tower academics to the side and look at the real world. People have offshore bank accounts. Interestingly enough, the government brought a lawsuit. Uh, to compel the Swiss to disclose right. something like 50,000 account holders. They settled it by saying, here are 4,500 of them. And I think that's where the government got lucky in the sense that people got incredibly nervous. So when they offered amnesty, people came racing in. 14,700 people came in to disclose offshore accounts that yeah. they weren't reporting and paying taxes on. That's a big number. Where's the IRS targeting next? Uh, probably other areas, other countries. I mean, Switzerland's always been known for bank secrecy. Um, I don't purport to be the expert off the top of my head, but I'm sure there are other venues with that, and that's probably what they're going to do is target those also. And the amnesty's expired for the 
this. With yeah, it expired them. in October, but now also I did catch out of the corner of my eye uh, some material about maybe extending it, which might not be a bad idea. I mean, and one last point. I mean, they're going to take 20 percent, it's interesting, of the value of your account, whereas yeah. under existing law they had the right to take up to 50, so that's how it works. Former federal prosecutor Doug Burns joining Thank us on so set. Much. Doug, it's, it's always good pleasure. to see you. Thank Thanks, you so Mark. much. Appreciate it. Online